All right, welcome to the Back to Basics Beach Kitchen. That's like a meal in an oyster. Rock slide has come up the beach here. Well, I'm starting to learn about these mud muscles. There you go. Mission success. I've literally traveled a thousand miles. Oh, yes! Look at the size of it! Welcome back to another episode. <laughs> Brand making a, a guest appearance there. Um, so the setup is, it is coming on lunchtime. We're hungry, we've got no food. We're gonna do our best to um, catch something for lunch. Species are uh, Fred Bin Salmon, Queenie, and the Barra is the ultimate goal. So we'll see how we go. Dropping tides, so all the water out of our marina has got to drop out here, funnel through this little section, and it all actually goes dry. So uh, you think there'd be the larger predatory fish like trevally, queenies, hopefully a barra, sitting in here, and as it all funnels out, it causes these back eddies as well. All right, let's try our luck. Get the crap out of me! It hit it, it hit it like right at my feet there. Oh yes! We needed something to eat so bad. He didn't even get a chance to jump. He just jumped straight on the bank. I'm like shaking, eh? That scared the crap out of me. Right, right on that dirty water. Yeah, I just scared me. I, I was bringing the lure out of the water. Never want to catch a fish more in my life, I reckon. Uh, He's arrested for us. That is the perfect eating size barramundi caught right on my feet. How good. Crispy skin barra for lunch, Fran. Mm hmm Yeah. So we're not running any gas on this trip, so it means if you're hungry and you want to cook up, you've got to get a fire going. So thankfully, at the high tide line here, there's a heap of, heap of good driftwood, but unfortunately, a heap of plastic as well. Now for kindling, a lot of this, this just leaves and um, smaller dry stuff's perfect. So we'll grab a handful of that and some bigger driftwood. We'll get this fire going. We try to our best to pick up all the plastic on the high tide line, but it's literally just such an overwhelming task. Um, we generally have like a really big fire and burn of it as much as we can. I know people say you're not meant to do that, but hey, like you got to pick your poison, man. It's a lot better than it being on the beach and, and um, seabirds and then turtles eating it and it just constantly going through that cycle. So. Um, yeah, it's just a constant reminder, you guys at home, please use less plastic. Um, anyway, we'll get this fire going. Cool. Fire's going good now, I'll go fill up the fish, eh? Alright, time to fill up this barra. I've been um, going mad over this crispy skin barra I'm going to show you. I think I've shown you a couple of snippets in the previous episode, but now we've got a bit of sunlight in the daytime. I'll go through the whole setup, how you do it. Um, yeah, it's bloody awesome. It's it's now my new favorite way to do fish. Absolute king of the creeks, aren't they? How they feed, how they fight, just everything about them. So bloody good. The fact that they've been so difficult for us to catch. I mean, you guys would have seen like time after time after time, we just couldn't catch the buggers. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no! No! <laughs> you can't just run up the beach with it, you gotta actually wind him in. <laughs> oh, that's heartbreaking. Our conversion rate is like none from six or something now. The fact that that was so difficult makes it just even so much better now that we're finally getting a few. I mean, like if you were getting them every cast, it just wouldn't be the same. So, you've got to work bloody hard for them. Um, first things first, when you're, when you're filleting up a fish, man, you've got to go as far away from your campsite as you possibly can. I'm um, way down yonder down the beach here. 
You guys would have seen um, when I had that farrow frame hanging in the uh, in the tree the other day, how good the crocodiles smell are. Crocodiles are obviously a huge, huge concern here. Um, it come right up the beach, um, right up to the high tide line and was like jumping under the tree to try and get that frame out. It was, it was really, really impressive. Rock slide has come up the beach here. Poor bugger has been sitting under the tree where the barramundi is jumping you can see him where he's like his claws are on the ground there as he's jumping trying to get it and then he's got the shit slid back down see he's he's prince here slid back down yeah i'm in a bit of a, a love-hate relationship with the crocodiles because obviously i love seeing them apex predator absolute dinosaur like just just the boss but just you know they can be obviously incredibly dangerous so generally generally speaking when you're camping around them, like if you're up on the bank away from the riverside you'll be all right but there are a few horror cases where there's been stories of them actually coming up and um dragging whole tents with people in them and dragging people by the leg down to the water's edge and you know they're only few and far between those stories but they're the ones that keep you up at night like that's just like a nightmare situation i couldn't think of anything worse it's proper like jurassic park kind of a setup so uh, we've got to be very cautious of what we're doing for this barramundi what we're going to do hopefully you can see there first of all i'm going to take his scales off just with your, your knife run against his body and that'll take the scales off but we're going to eat his skin and as you can see these barras we've got his huge scales which just um yeah don't go too well you get one of them caught in your throat and you're going to know about it end up talking like darren lockyer all right now that we've got a scaleless barramundi we're going to fill it him up First thing, you should probably have a stable platform, unlike these two mangrove roots I'm working with here, but it's the only kind of spot I could get to so I could share it with you. And you're gonna end up with two beautiful barra fillets. I'll chop it into uh, meal-sized pieces, and we'll get it into the pan. I'll show you what we do with it. And don't put that barra frame hanging out of a tree near your camp. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Back to Basics Beach Kitchen. We have one fillet of barramundi scaled. Fran's doing her best to cook up a little bit of rice there, but the, um, the beach kitchen is very challenging in 30 knot winds and occasional rain downfalls. So just, just having a red hot crack, aren't you? Good job. This is um, third time I've done this and it's evolved every time. But bear with me. What we're going to do now is the, the key players in this are salt and chopped garlic. I assume if you had fresh garlic, that'd be pretty good also. On the skin of the barramundi, going to salt it what this does it helps it go nice and crispy once you shallow fry it in the pan so get a hey nah don't cut it yet i'll cut it afterwards i just find it easier oh i guess you could probably cut it first fran will cut it first oh well you're welcome to cut it first but how i'm going to do it today is just like this massage the salt into the barrel Flesh. Flip him over. Voila. And then we're going to chop him into like restaurant servings. That's a nice one there. So what I've done previously is I put the barra on scale or skin down first, which made it awesome and crispy. But as soon as that skin hits the pan, it like folds up on itself. So today I'm going to try go the meat side down so it holds its shape and then at the end, crisp up that skin. See how we go. And the key ingredient into the meat side is love. Is love. I'm gonna serve it with a fair bit of that, but garlic, also a generous amount of garlic. Am I ruining your show? <laughs> no, you're making it better. How's your cookie show going, friend? When can I expect to see? Oh no. <laughs> is the rice that bad? And that is ready for the fire when Fran makes a bit of room. All right, you want to stoke your fire up, get it nice and hot. Your pan on, get your oil on there. And just when it starts popping at you, just letting you know the time is right. Ooh. So previously I was going, I'll show you what happens here. I'll go, I'll do one down, but it's how it curls up a little bit. So now I'm going the other way. I'm going skin side down. And Tim, share the oil around.
Oh, that smells so good. Now, once you can see the white flesh having cooked at least halfway through, we'll turn him over and go for the crispy skin. Oh, might have been a little bit hot, but hey, you live and you learn. All right, so for future, it's definitely better to do it the way I'd normally been doing it, like that one there. And you get that crispy skin on top. Sort of stuffed this up. The last three times, the last couple of times I've done this and haven't filmed, it's turned out perfect. As soon as I put a bloody camera on it, it, it all goes to shit. Anyway, I hope it's still good. The other way to do it is um, make sure whoever you're serving it to hasn't eaten for like a day or so, so they're starving. I can know. I think it's the best thing ever. <laughs> and there we have lunch for today. We've got Fran's brown rice and the crispy skin barra. You can see what we're going for there. That crispy skin is so delicious. For the future, I do the skin side down to start with. It um, worked far better. Is it right? Does it taste good? So good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's good. Just gonna go this little tasty bit here. Oh, it's hot. It's so good that bit I did skin side down, fam. Yeah. So good, so crunchy. Yeah, let's just walk down the bank here and have a look at him, man. Eh? Yeah. Alright, so today the low tide has coincided with just about lunchtime. Just after lunchtime, we're pretty hungry. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty shallow all behind me. We're going to go for a bit of a walk, get some fresh oysters, but also uh, I'm going to show you my favourite way of my favourite way of having the oysters. All right, so all we're going to do, found a rock here that now at low tide, as you can see, there's some of these beautiful big black lip oysters on top of it. You've got two options here. You can first of all open them up fresh like these couple I did yesterday and fresh oysters, or option two, you can smoke them. So I've got some palm fronds, a tiny little bit of wood, these palm fronds will burn really, really well. That'll smoke the oyster and they'll should open up straight away. Oh, it's hot. A couple of them opening up. The idea is obviously that the heat causes the oysters to open up and then you just let some of that smoke linger around, that flavour will go through the oysters. Then in a sec, once it's all cooled off, brush it off and see how we went. Moment of truth. It's huge, hey? Huge. <laughs> what an oyster. Check that out. That's like a meal in an oyster. That's so good. So the idea is obviously the heat caused that oyster to open up. We could get in there easily and it's got that smoky flavor. So smoked oyster. Oh, these are so huge. Look at the size of that PB oyster right there. That is so good. Black lip oysters, the one I'm after here, they're only found in a few select spots. Generally, if it's close to like a lot of people or a town, they all get eaten out pretty quickly. But the beauty of this, where I am, is um, it's one of the most isolated and remote places on the East Coast. So I really struggled to see how anyone would come and have pulled in on this beach here. The only reason we're here um, is because the, the weather's so rough and we've got a tiny boat we can tuck in here. So most boats that cruise up and down the coast, um, the water's just too shallow, as you can see, it goes high and dry. So they skip straight past this spot 
and would head um, further north for a better shelterage. So that's why there's just these black lip oysters in abundance. Walking through the mangroves here, hoping to find a bit of a feed, and um, on the menus, hopefully, mud crab. That is huge. <laughs> Holy but a close second to that is these mud mussels. I've just spotted one here. They're like an oversized pippy, they're huge. You just got to get in pretty dirty to get them. Be like a bit of a circular shape, and there you go. There's an, looks like there's another one in here. If we can grab a few of these, this would be a beautiful feed. I think I've just stepped on one here. Yep, another one there. Oh yes, I found a little mud mussel garden. I must admit I'm still learning with these, eh, and what I can eat and what I can find in the mangroves. Here we go, I found a bit of a, a hot spot now. This is awesome. I saw that pig the other day going through the mud, just digging up the mud. And I, was, I reckon he was after these mud mussels or there's another one. Um, Looks like a snail, like a mangrove snail, I believe they're called, or they should be called that. Um, I don't think they've got as much meat in them. But, yeah, so we're hoping for mud mussel. It doesn't really look like there's too many mud crabs around. But I'm just sort of stomping down like a pig in the mud here. And seeing if I can find any. Oh. It's one of those mangrove snails I was talking about. We'll leave them. See, just like a bit of a pippy shape. You can pull away and hit that. There he is, mud mussel. And these, from in comparison to other ones I've seen, these are, are huge. These are these are big ones. So I'm pretty excited about that. I reckon we're gonna have a good feed of them. It's so windy even in the mangroves here, and the gusts of wind make all the, the mangrove trees hit together. It sounds exactly like a crocodile coming through the bank, um, and just over the other side, out of the out of the tight countries where we've been seeing those big croc slides. So, yeah, I'm just got to stay onto it here. This is so good, being totally out of my comfort zone. Oh, something's buddy. Here we go. Check out the size of that one. He's trying to make a getaway. <laughs> uh, it's so good being out of my comfort zone and somewhere I'm just. Um, absolutely not an expert in like I enjoy the ocean side of things where I can go diving for crayfish and trout and I'm always comfortable getting a feed there but in the mangroves like this um, I just haven't spent as much time in here as I'd like so and even yesterday I must admit I'm a little bit on edge here we saw a couple of wild bulls running through here big pigs and crocodiles so like every noise it's just a bit like oh kind of on um, hyper alert but I'm starting to learn about these mud mussels which is awesome is you want to get you get it where it's deep and dirty like really sludgy sludgy water um, and you'll see one here a couple of telltale signs if there's any movement in the mud I'll move so say if I if I walk next to him sometimes I'll even spurt water up at you and that's when you know you want there you go if it does that you obviously know you you're um, feeling in the right direction it looks like there's another one here so oh, I think I found a bit of a honey hole for him here which is awesome couple more and then that should be enough for a great feed tonight. Mission success! Guess what I got? I finally cracked the code to finding mud mussels. Like big ones, huge ones, like the biggest ones I've ever seen. They're too big to carry so I left them over there. Are you happy? I'm happy. <laughs> so that's what we're heading for.